Punchline, the Joker's newest henchwench, time of recording, although DC tried to move her away from that role as quickly as possible, but also still keep the associated branding and marketing with it. And the character struggled, not only as a result of that, but from being pushed very hard quite rapidly without any kind of cohesive trajectory. And while the push was born of initial excitement and interest, that lack of direction quickly became an issue. And that appears to be continuing time of recording. Although of course, appearances can be deceiving. However, it's been a while since we've had a punchline sighting and we've been tracking this character's evolution on this channel. Why? Because I find it interesting and the character has potential. I like her. So where is Punchline? What is she doing? Well, it looks like she may be coming a bit back to base, maybe. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics, and it's time to check out just what is going on with Punchline. We have an entire Punchline playlist, so if you need a refresher, check that out. She's had quite the journey, even if at the moment the destination is a bit undefined. That's part of the excitement. That's part of the fun, maybe, allegedly. Punchline debuted in Batman number 89 in 2020. She was created by James Tiny in the fourth and Jorge Jimenez. She debuted as a new sidekick for the Joker. And while she is different from Harley in terms of base motivation, motivations, and also in the way that she views the Joker, she was very quickly defined as either the Joker's new girlfriend or replacement Harley Quinn, which while overly simplistic, does have enough rings of truth to it that those explanations can serve as a quick entry point understanding the character. And they did play off of it with the variant covers and the two fighting each other very early on. It's a good easy hook. But who exactly is Punchline? Well, Punchline is Alexis K, a nihilistic young woman who has come to very much identify with the Joker's message, or what she believes it to be. She believes she understands the joke. This occurred after encounters with his ideas and videos of him on the internet. Then her history expanded to even more of a close encounter, where she was part of a hostage situation that he was orchestrating. This while she was in school. The exploration of Alexis herself, independent from the Joker, as done through her creator, has centered around the idea of how much Alexis was like this anyway even without an encounter with the Joker. Was she always destined for something like this and the Joker was just the catalyst? If it hadn't been the Joker, would it have been someone else? Or would she have just have evolved this way on her own? Or is Alexis the natural result of having to live and grow up in the fear of the Joker? Has his presence shaped not only her, but the youth of Gotham? Just as Batman has an impact, was the Joker's impact? Or was Alexis a victim seeking agency and a way to cope with trauma? All of these things flirting around the question of if he's the joke, is she the punchline? Because the question remains, what exactly is the joke? One of the key differences between her her and Harley was that Harley viewed the Joker as a misunderstood victim of circumstance and how large I can fix him complex, at least at the start. This also was coupled with the idea that perhaps she can make a bit of her name for herself if she could be the person to do it because Harley also was complex and the Joker was then able to prey upon that. Though there are some iterations where he does have some genuine feelings for Harley. They just don't exceed the feelings he has for other things in his life like Batman. Now we need to contrast that with Alexis who feels the Joker is someone to be idolized. Someone who has cracked the joke at the heart of society or life itself and she understands and identifies with that or what she believes that to be. She doesn't want to change him. She wants to be in on that joke and prove herself and perhaps even surpass him, using him as a springboard to gain that level of relevancy. As a lot of Punchline's character is tied up with being of the tech generation, seeking views, relevance, importance, clout, being embedded in online culture. Also, most importantly, being aware of how that culture works and able to manipulate it, use it to her advantage. She is well aware of her image, what it is, works to cultivate and maintain it and use different aspects on it to play upon different people. At the start, Alexis was presented as a high up hench person for the Joker, in charge of many aspects of the operation during Joker War, but also doing her own things. She did start out the gate with a bit too much being able to do everything, including combat, but they lowered that very quickly, the combat aspect, but she still had the intense ability to make chemicals and the like. She was a monster who enjoyed creating new toxins and testing them on the homeless population and children. She had also exposed herself in the process. The effects of that were still to be determined and were played more with in her miniseries later on. Her relationship with the Joker vacillated. At times, especially at the start, it appeared more mentor-mentee, although she was putting more into it than he was. It appeared that she was more obsessed with being close to him than a romantic relationship. But as time went on, you would see the romantic element creep more into various stories. But at times it felt like it was more her idea than his, or an afterthought. It's a different vibe for sure. But even so, it wasn't the prime focus. And that doesn't seem to truly be the way either really regard each other. Though that could change. I see you Batman 147 couple variant cover. It comes comes up, when it does, it's always a bit awkward because it doesn't entirely feel like it fits. Not for her and him anyway, because again, she's not Harley. Also, we've been there and done that. Let's try a different angle. Not that you couldn't just have a different type of relationship and have that be the different angle. There's a lot of using going on in this relationship between Punchline and the Joker. And while Punchline clearly amuses Joker, it's less clear how he feels about her overall. All of these threads are fascinating. And as one can see, Punchline brims with potential. However, as of time of recording, it has yet to be tapped. 
Following the event of Joker War, the era in which Punchline debuted, she had a one-shot. Well, that was during. It kind of explained who she was. This was the beginning of her origin, which set her up as an edgy Joker fangirl. Then another further Punchline story expanded this. This was about her tracking down the Joker and her early encounter with him. Next, she got her own miniseries in the back of Joker's ongoing. The storyline was the trial of Punchline, this beginning in 2021. So you can see a lot of work was done with her starting in 2020 and through 2021. Eventually, Trial of Punchline was separated and placed in its own trade in 2022. This arc focused on Alexis's manipulation skills and further explored her past. It was also a commentary on radicalization and social media, which while interesting was one-sided, as they ignored certain aspects of online culture that are very prevalent, such as the fact that while Punchline would have fans, she would also have a lot of haters. For example, she puts out an online apology, and while some people would buy it, there would also be people relentlessly mocking it. And that could have been interesting to play with, the idea that the sympathy would win out, even though she was being so obviously transparent to other people. But they didn't explore all of the elements, but what was there was interesting. The end of these backups left Punchline a position for her own miniseries, The Gotham Game from 2022. Now at this point, we were really starting to break off from Punchline being written by her own creator, or rather one of her co-creators. As the vast majority of Punchline's appearances in Joker War had been written by her co-creator, though sometimes in other books had different authors, and he was still the co-author on the backup stories. So 2022 in the Gotham game was when creative direction really began to shift. This series was by Tinny Howard and her husband, Blake Howard. This series was trying to establish Punchline herself as a presence in her own right, having split off from the Joker. And she was trying to enter the drug kingpin game, but also looking for clout, and she was trying to form her own royal flesh gang, things really started to go more off the rails here. This also crossed over a bit with Catwoman because that was also being written by Tinny Howard, that one by herself. That series left Punchline in a position of still looking to find her own thing and establish herself. Next, Punchline got her own Night Terrors outing in 2023, which postulated that this nihilistic sociopathic criminal's greatest fear was online hate, which could have worked if they'd gone a bit more of a non-traditional route with it. Because this story just told one to ignore the online haters, but potentially missed, unless it was intentional, the oddity of this message being presented through the truly reprehensible villain of the story. Also, the online hate was weak. Weak sauce. That one was also frustrating because it had some truly cool elements and imagery, and with one or two twists, could have been a masterclass in either exploring Punchline's psyche or making an ironic commentary on what she was saying. And that was the last really big video we did because Punchline hasn't been overly active since her mini. And I know that wasn't every appearance. She's popped up a little bit here and there. For example, while her own series was ongoing, she also popped up in the Joker, the man who stopped laughing, and she was on the Legion of Doom, and she was kicking Joker to the curb on one of them. But that's the overall Punchline line trajectory and key appearances. Now, time of recording, she's popped up in Chip Zdarsky's Batman run, Batman 146 from 2024, in the story Dark Prisons Part 2, which is part of Zdarsky's intense interest in exploring Batman of Zuranar, Batman's backup personality, as Redux and Edified by Grant Morrison as of 2008, with some tweaks, there have been some changes made. Punchline is featured in the main story, as there is a backup, which is also by Zdarsky, which has been a staple since he took over the book in Batman 125 in 2022, with Failsafe Part 1, a plot he is still working with as this story also involves fail state. So we'll quickly cliff notes the basis of Zdarsky's Batman run. This run is playing a lot with interrogating Batman's paranoia and the distinction between Bruce Wayne and Batman is explored through comparison and contrast with his backup personality, the Batman of Zero R. There have been some detours and other plots, but that has predominantly been the main overarching focus. As of Batman 146, Bruce Wayne has been displaced and captured. Batman is now the Zuranar personality uploaded into a failsafe android, with the assumption by others being that Batman has died and that this is Bruce's personality in the android. Though some do have questions and are considering if Bruce succumbed to Zuranar, not knowing that the real Bruce has been captured. This by the Warden, or Daniel Captio, who has been revealed to have trained both Batman and the Joker. So the Warden wanted to exacerbate Batman and the Joker's rivalry. This is a form of experimentation to try and bring out Zuranar, or Zur as they just keep calling him, because I guess they don't want to write out the whole thing. We only have so much bubble space. So he's been manipulating both, encouraging the Joker to find things that will prompt the release of Zerg. Plans on top of plans on top of there is a bit of a Batman and Joker god tier mode fetishization through some of this, at least as presented through the villain. The two of you are the most dangerous men on the planet. Everyone lives because you simply haven't decided to kill them. Daniel views Zur as the true Batman. Now, this Zuranar is less murderous than the original reimagining by Morrison, but the whole going too far aspect is still there. And now that Bruce and Zur have been separated, we'll see where that goes. It is nice to see those negative traits of the paranoia and control separated from Bruce and him still being Batman and having a desire to help people. 
cool. Like all Batman runs, it has its highs and its lows. We'll see which it has more of once it's done. But this was a punchline video, so bring on the punchline. Bruce and the Joker are sharing a cell when punchline is brought into the prison by fail-safe robots. Leave it to the Gotham cops to hire robot fascists. She is online a lot, her calling them that tracks. Punchline, she'll give them something else to focus on while I make my move. Didn't even give me my phone call. Now, despite the fact that the last time Punchline really interacted with Joker in any iteration, she kicked him to the curb and didn't want anything to do with him. She was done with him, as seen in her own mini and also the Joker made her stop laughing. But suddenly she's down to help him. <laughs> oh, Punchline, how I've missed you. Joker, what happened to you? I'm right as rain, dearie. I'll get us out of here. Of course you will. But first, we should have some fun. I'm normally really into the little clown dot on Punchline's nose, but it looks really, really silly in this panel. It looks like she just has a really angry boil. Now, the relationship here is shown very much like it was in the early Batman days when she first appeared. Well, early for her. Not early for Batman. We have to go back to the 40s for that. What that means for Punchline is that it seems that she's very invested in him for her various reasons, and he's back to being amused by and finding her useful slash interesting. The ways in which Harley and Punchline approached him are very different. Maybe we should do a video about that because I could detour off into that. Let me know if you want to hear about that. Interestingly enough, they actually cut from the punchline scene to a Harley scene and then back to punchline, which in a way highlights the gap that for some punchline is filling. Because for some who missed the evil Harley or at least the more evil aligned Harley, even if she wasn't fully bad, Punchline is really filling that whole bad girl role. They're contrasting each other in these scenes. I'm not sure if it's purposeful or if they just laid it out that way. If it's just a way to set up the next scene, a bridge. They're okay. Now to find a way out and... Wait, what's Punchline? Click, look at her face. She's so into it. That was Punchline releasing all the cells, so Batman has to fight all the prisoners on the level they're on. Except the robot guards show up, so he doesn't have to which would have been ridiculous, but also cool. And that's Punchline. The rest of the issue is Batman trying to escape, Damien starting to question if that's Bruce and Failsafe, and Superman having a discussion with Failsafe Zero Batman, who he thinks is Bruce, and playing upon one of my worst fears, which is being replaced and no one actually noticing, especially your family or friends. At least this is a backup personality with his memories, so it's close, but still. So it's a brief appearance, but it's still significant. In that, Punchline is still floating around a bit without a fully defined purpose. This scene really didn't have to feature her. I'm glad it did. Maybe it's because of Jimenez and he's one of her co-creators and he does like drawing her, but that's a speculation on my part. But also this appearance brings her back closer to her pre-miniseries base. And personally, I wouldn't mind if they branched out from here again. Kind of just left that mini in a corner and we can refer to little threads from it, but not have to reference it over much. Punchline needs some time to cook as the kids say, or have ideas developed for her in other words. Some focus sent her way. So maybe she could use some time in the background before or return to the foreground she was shoved into right out the gate. It's also something to ponder whether this is a deliberate ignoring of the past, if it's simply too soon to tell, or if her past is being a bit phased into the let's not speak of some of this again so we can go in a different direction category. Part of the reason it's difficult to tell is, well, there are a few. One is that Ken has been a bit loose as of the past few years and it's only starting to kind of come back to coalescing time of recording. There was a whole omniverse, which is kind of sort of still in play, but now they're starting to refer things together again a bit more, which is something I really appreciate, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. But also there's the fact that we live in this digital era that even I'm participating in where things happen and instantly people respond. That's part of the fun in my opinion. It depends how far you take it. You got to leave stories, room to evolve and see where they're going. I'm just glad Alexis is still here, still bad and loving it. May the Zuran R arc end so I can do the update video is planning when it started, but it just keeps going. It's the Energizer Bunny of backup Batman personality stories. Anyway, that was just a quick update. What do you think is going on with this? Is it too soon to tell? Do you like Punchline, like seeing her? Do you think they're purposely ignoring past stories, lack of communication? Where do you want our story to go? Put it all down below. And while you're down there, please do all YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.